Ali Pants in the building. What's going on there, driver? Uh, well, I just got home from my run last uh, weekend, and so mm-hmm. I was supposed to go to school today, but I got home too late this morning to be able to make it. Oh, you go to school? What What are you doing other than truck driving? I mean, what What, what else you got going on other than uh, other than driving trucks? So I'm also in school to become a diesel mechanic. <gasps> awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's really interesting. Uh, I figured if I'm going to drive them, I should know how they work. Exactly. And, uh, I really like mechanical stuff. So it's been uh, super helpful, actually. It made me a better driver in addition to, you know, learning how to be a mechanic. All right. So what made you what made you decide to, to go to school for a diesel mechanic? Well, I've always liked to take things apart and put them back together. And uh, I had thought about going to school for diesel mechanics for a long time. And I ended up having a moment in life where I was in transition between jobs and uh, the opportunity came open. So I just thought, why not? Life always happens. For it. <laughs> life yeah. always happens yeah. when, when you really want to do something. Yeah. So speaking of life Absolutely. happens. What what was what was happening in your life before you got into trucking, and what made you get into it? So before I was in trucking, I was a casino attendant and bartender for I don't know ten to fifteen years somewhere in there, and uh, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed working with people. It was fun. Uh, you know, it's anything you could want. You've got good music. You've got good people. You've got the libations and all of the fun stuff but you don't have any of the benefits. <laughs> so I started understanding the concept that I'm getting much older than I thought I was at the time. And I needed to get myself some benefits like a retirement and whatnot if I wanted to do the things I wanted to do in life. Right, so right. I started thinking about careers. What do I want to do that can provide that for me? And trucking was the most appealing. Okay, so trucking was appealing to you, but you you was a you was a bartender. I mean, you served liquor, you you talked to the people, you mm-hmm. did the nightlife. Mm-hmm. <laughs> trucking appealed to you though? Yeah, it did because it's the idea of getting to see the country. It's the idea of I, I mean, I've always liked to drive since I was a kid. Uh, cars and driving have always been just kind of part of what I've always loved and been interested in, Uh, whether it was going to the races when I was a kid or when I was a little kid, I didn't play with Barbies. I played with Hot Wheels. Uh, And so anything vehicle has always kind of just been in my wheelhouse. And so that's why trucking, I thought, yeah, if I'm going to do it, I might as well do something I would want to do and would enjoy. And so trucking was what I chose. Now, 15 years in, in, in the bar industry, was it at one bar or multiple bars? Oh, no, it was at multiple different places. Um, so I started off at a little dive bar in my town named Harry David, and they're not around anymore, unfortunately. But uh, I was working the door as a bouncer and taking money for cover and whatnot. And then that led to another job at a really popular bar in town, which was also kind of a dive bar called the Elbow Room. But it was one of those dive bars where you could see a senator sitting next to a homeless guy, both having a beer, and nobody would think anything of it. It just was one of those catch-all places where uh, everybody came all the time. And so I started working the door there, and then I eventually became a bartender in the mornings and then I became a bartender at night and worked my way into the casino side of it, uh, which I actually enjoyed more because it's a little more quiet and not quite as um, busy. Okay. 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 Now, as far, as far as being a bar, you know, bartender and everything, I'm sure you saw a lot of action. What what's some of the action that that comes to mind that you can that you can think back on? <laughs> yeah, I've got 
stories for days. That's for sure. There, uh, people are people, right? And we're all very interesting in our own way. Yeah. Um, most of my best stories uh, okay, came so I'm, from I'm a little bit confused. You know, just having to excuse people from the establishment. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people are pretty cool about it. Most people, not so much. <laughs> they take it pretty personally. And so there was one time. Uh, <laughs> I feel bad for calling it this, but it's it's the story where it's referred to as the midget tossing story. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was bouncing at a dive bar and this little gal, she was maybe, maybe five foot tall, maybe on a, on a good day. About a buck Uh, 50. She would come into our establishment. (laughs) What's that? I said about a buck 50, five foot tall and a buck 50. Maybe. I don't know. (laughs) I mean, she was just tiny, but anyway, she thought she owned the world. Mm -hmm. And so, she would stay after hours at the bar and we would have the hardest time getting her out of there all the time. Wow. And on this particular day, I was tired. I wanted to go home. I was not in the mood for her stuff and she was outside. So I wasn't going to let her come in because I knew what she was going to do. Mm-hmm. So she goes to come in and I block the door because I'm taking trash out at this point. And uh, I said, ma'am, we're closed. You can't come in. And she says, well, I have to go to the bathroom. What? And I said, okay, well, you'll have to go to your house to use your bathroom because we're closed. And she says, this is a public establishment. You you have to have a public bathroom. <laughs> and I said, well, we do, but we're closed. Right. So you're going to have to go use the bathroom at your house. Or somewhere else. And she didn't like that. She didn't know what to think of that. So she kind of stood there for a little bit, and I took the garbage out to the dumpster and came back, and I was grabbing the next one, and she was going to blow right past me. So I picked her up by the collar and by the belt, and she swung her big suitcase purse at me, oh, and uh, that, that I ducked. <laughs> she picked her up, and I literally threw her down the back ramp. I'm like, I told you no, lady. And so she kind of crumples a little bit, and I was hovering over her, and I just said, I told you no. If you ever come back again, that's it. You're done. Gotcha. You're out for good. Wow. And so she called the cops. Oh. <laughs> And the cops came, and she thought she was going to get in my face and, like, give me the what for while the cop was standing there. Mm -hmm. And he pushes her back and says, ma'am, what are you doing? And I'm just standing there with my hands crossed because I don't even care. I just want to go home. And uh, she stops, and the cop says, "What what do you want going on here? After she had explained all her bullshit story, I'm the big bad evil witch or whatever, you know. And uh, I said, I'm not looking to press charges, sir. I said, I just want to go home and I want her out of here. That's right. all. Right. That's all I'm asking for. I just want her to go home so that I can go home. And okay. he said, ma'am, did you hear that? This is your opportunity to just go home. And it's still and not she registered. Kind of at him. Yeah, and she's like, uh, she's, not, she's, she's just flabbergasted. What is going on right now? <laughs> So she ended up leaving, and I never had any other problems with her. But yeah, that was a, a funny night. My coworkers wow. used to laugh because they they were coming around the corner when when <laughs> she was landing, <laughs> and they saw me hovering over, and they're like, "All I saw was you pointing your finger in her face, treating her like she was a kid." And I said, "All right, well, we're good." And moved on. <laughs> wow, that was. <laughs> That was yeah. interesting and cool at the same time. You're not you're not the one to be messing with. <laughs> well, you know, it's like here's the thing. Like I try to be a really loving and caring person, but just like anybody, I have my boundaries. Mm-hmm. You know, there's only so much you can take before you have to put your foot down and say enough is enough. Right, right. And some people push it to the point where you really have to, you know, go mama bear on them and say, "Listen, kid, you're about to get spanked." <laughs> So, how long have you been driving? How, how long have you been in trucking? Uh, about four or five years. Oh, okay, okay. Where where did you get your start at? Like, did you go to school or did you go to a trucking company? Um, well, kind of both, honestly. So, initially, when I was uh, younger, in my early 20s, mm-hmm. um, I had a bunch of friends that ended up working for the beer company, and I thought, well, I want to work with them. That sounds fun to me. Mm-hmm. So I took six months and, and called every Wednesday for six months, the beer company, to get them to hire me. 
And then once they hired me, I convinced them to let me learn how to drive because I paid better. Mm -hmm. And so they let me teach myself how to drive, and that was a disaster. (laughs) It was awful. Uh, I ended up backing into just about anything a person could back into, you know, Um, because I didn't have a teacher and I didn't know anything about it. You know, I got to a point where I got better at driving and good at driving, but it was through the wrong kind of experience. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so I quit that, and that's it's at that point that I went into bartending and I really loved bartending. And then after, uh, I decided if I'm going to go into trucking that I'm going to do it the right way this time. So I went to school and there's a little tribal college just North of where I live that has a highway construction program that offers not only heavy equipment, but also trucking. And it was a three month course. And I thought, okay, I'm going to learn everything I need to learn in three months. Okay. I like that. I like that extra time. And so I took that course and and learned how to do both. And now here I am. And that was about, mm, what, four years ago, I think? 2008? Yeah. All right. All right. 18. Now, let me me ask you this question right quick, Allie. Do you you think being that you went and took the course, uh, you know, years ago and getting out in three months versus – do you think that the uh, that the company can ha- the the school can handle the way of the FMCSA has changed everything now? You think you think the previous school that you went to can 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 adapt to that? Absolutely, uh, they already have the same idea, and they're already accredited. And to me, I feel like, of course, you know, there are some things about it that I probably would have tweaked if it were my decision. But generally speaking, I think they had it on the ball way ahead of the FMCSA in making it a full semester class, in giving uh, people the drive time and getting people the drive time in the winter conditions uh, and in adverse weather on roads that, you know, thank God are not very populated because it's just in a small town. So I think they're really on the ball ahead of the FMCSA. I think they're going to be fine. All right, all right. Now that you now that you got your CDLs and you're going for your diesel mechanic uh, certificate, do you would you make more as a diesel mechanic? I would assume so. Uh, no, not really. Uh, a seasoned mechanic makes about the same as a trucker, and I think the metrics are kind of similar in terms of. If you work for a company, you're going to make about the same as a company driver would make. If you own your own shop, you're probably going to make about the same as an owner operator would, that kind of thing. Um, Starting out, you know, you're going to start out like a driver, a new driver would start out at a company and you're not going to make very much money until you hone your skills and get better at it. When you decided to when you decided to get into trucking, what 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 are some of the expectations that you that that you was looking for when you got into trucking? Um, the expectations that I had were better pay and job availability. Uh, I knew that I would be secure. I'd always have a job. There would never come a time that I wouldn't be a valuable asset to a company. So with that comes opportunity. It means you can go literally anywhere in the world anytime you want and you'll have the ability to work, which means you'll have the ability to provide for yourself. And that's the best security in the world, really. All right. That's kind of the only security. Now, in your, you say four years, four, five years Mm -hmm. of trucking? Yeah. Have you, have you, have you ever, have you yourself as, you know, been in a, any, trucking incidents or accident or have you seen uh, an accident in the beginning of your trucking career that kind of made you think hmm maybe this wasn't the career that I want I haven't had any experiences in this last four, four going on five years that have made me think that trucking is not for me Uh, by any means, but I have had a couple instances myself and then seen some pretty messed up stuff for sure. Um, There was one winter we 
were driving on some roads that uh, there was an accident that was completely blocking the road and there was no hope of this accident being cleaned up anytime soon. And I had a full day. I was hauling fuel at the time and I had a full day. This was my first load out of the chute. I needed to get going. So we tried to back to a place where we could, uh, me and another driver were actually uh, convoying at that particular point in time. So we were trying to back to a place where we could turn our trucks around and I didn't feel good about backing that far. So I found a driveway and I thought, I think I can make this. I think I can turn this around and right here. And I probably would have been able to do it if I would have judged the road better. Uh, but it had a soft shoulder on this driveway. And so I ended up getting stuck in there and having to get towed out. That was my incident. Uh, but I have seen a lot of wrecks on I-90 this year that have been pretty scary a lot of rollovers wow what's what's yeah. some what's what's some of the stereotypes you feel that females face in uh in in the industry the stereotypes that we face as females yes ma'am uh well i mean it just kind of depends there are some good stereotypes in that there are a handful of people men and women in companies that uh, recognize that we stereotype us as though, you know, we have uh, great attention to detail. There's that. Females generally have better attention to de- detail. Females generally are more cautious drivers. So those are some of the good stereotypes. Uh, but then some of the bad stereotypes is that we're incapable and that we, I just ran up against some of my videos this week about that we uh, play the victim that we sorry about that go ahead what's that i'm sorry about that I, my other phone kicked away <laughs> go ahead oh i'm sorry i didn't hear you no, no i said my other phone kicked on go ahead oh gotcha okay <laughs> so and then there's the stereotype that we bat our eyelashes to get somebody else to do it for us um so, you know, there's some good ones and some bad ones. All right. All right. So, Allie, I, I saw a video on your TikTok. And, I, well, I have a uh-huh. I have a few. Uh, I Me, personally, I, I really do have issues with TikTok. I am, I am definitely not a fan of this app. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, it's, yeah, it's frustrating from time to time. Why? Let's start with that. Why? Why did you? Why? Why did you choose TikTok as as a uh, as a uh, as a platform over uh, over other platforms that can probably get your message out the same? Uh, it was really just default at the time. I was getting tired of Facebook, and I had seen something on TV about the TikTok, and I thought, well, I'll check it out. You know, I don't particularly care for Snapchat. So let's check out TikTok and see what it's all about. And this was pre COVID. Mm -hmm. And so I got on there and it was just fun. It was people having fun. And it was everyday, ordinary people. And you felt like you were a part of a cool group of people just having fun together. Nothing special, nothing exciting. Uh, Well, I mean, it was kind of exciting, I guess, but. You know, it wasn't uh, like, you know, you're following a star or something. You're just Mm -hmm. in this community of people doing these fun things. And then COVID hit and TikTok exploded because everybody was home and had nothing better to do. And then they saw how much fun it was and how much more fun it was than all of the political turmoil on Facebook and, you know, all of the other things. And so... Uh-huh. My, my my platform just started growing from that. And in participating in that community, I've grown to love it. And other platforms I've tried just don't have that same community and that same feel. How how do you feel? How do you, I was about to ask you, how, how, how do you feel about it now, post-COVID, and that everybody and a mama decide to come in on this app with very... Um, I still love the app because I love what it's done for especially in particular the trucking community. I think TikTok has 
offered one of the best tools known to the trucking industry in decades in that it gives 